this is a toned background. Sometimes I use white background, sometimes I use toned background. Just it's only a change. And when you paint continuously on white background, you get bored. When you paint continuously on toned background, you get bored. Maybe there may be some effects if you do the on tonal backgrounds, you will get some some different uh, effect. If you paint on white background, it will lead to some other thing. But it's always a change. Usually the artist wants to some change and he, and he wants to work. So here, in this painting I am using toned background. So, now we have to start a painting. Where I have to start this question? This I would like to discuss something about where I have to start. Usually, I start, especially when I am painting from imagination, there won't be any picture for me to work. So, I have to get everything out of nothing. I have to evolve from moment to moment. Whatever I apply on canvas, it has to guide me or lead me for the next level. So it is, when you are painting for imagination, this is the problem usually you have to face. If there is a picture, if there is a photograph, or if you paint from outdoor, you have a reference. So do you, know, you know where, what you have to paint, where which the subjects are there, which shapes are there, which color is there, you know it. But when you're painting from imagination, you don't know what you are going to paint. That's the problem. For that, to solve that problem, I usually I, I plan to paint from focal point. What is focal point? Focal point means basically we, the viewers, Whenever we see a scene, there is some point which will attract us very intensely. So we we'll get it at that, that place, the point will get our attention. So when, it's, when you are seeing a, a scene, there is some point which will attract you more than other areas that you call it focal point. Usually light attracts us. In a scene, light attracts us. So, where the strongest light lies, there your focal point lies. A simple understanding. I don't want to go for more complex piece on these things. Now, this is all canvas. Where is the focal point lies? Where you have to put your focal point? That's another question. For example, you see. This is the off of the off of the canvas. This is. If you put your focal point in the center of the canvas, automatically what's going to happen? The viewer will see this area here, the focal point here. Automatically, he has to go remaining canvas, but he doesn't know which way he has to go. Because he is in the center, he will get confused which side he has to move. This side or this side. He will get confused. So that's why you better avoid focal point in the center of the canvas. But you better, so that it should be of the center. That means here or here or here or here. This is the right side. This is left side. So your focal point, uh, you are going to put right side or left side. That's the question again. If it is right side or left side, again, I'm repeating the same question. Is it right side or left side? What is the pros and cons of the right and left sides? Usually we will see the our vision go to the right side of the canvas, not the left side. First we will see the right side, then our eye will move this way. 
But if you put, so if you put focal point here, the viewers, your eye will go there, from there, from here, it will come and it will, it will come here, again it will to here. For example, suppose you put your focal point here, the eye will have to come here because strongest light lies there. Then the eye will ignore this area totally. It won't give much importance to it because lighter area is there, usually sees and they try to exit from this point. Then you have the whole effort of whatever you are there, it won't get much attention from the viewer. That's why it's just uh, when you go to the magazines, the periodicals and magazines, when somebody giving ad about their product, they request the magazine ad department to place their ad right side of the magazine, this side. The reason is, usually we will see the first look, we will see the right side, then only we have to get the left side. That's why better you put your focal point right side of the canvas, either low or up, doesn't matter. So, that's why I am going to start my focal point right side. I told you I will start the focal point this place. So, here I am starting. I use this big knife, I won't use small knife. If I use small knife, it's a little bit congested, a little bit inconvenience. I have to lot work. There won't be any broad stroke if I use small knife. That's why I use big knife. Here you use simply white, double yellow, medium yellow, a little bit of yellow orange. I apply the colors simply tonal transition, the transition of values basically. So yellow is, lemon yellow is most lighter value, the medium yellow is a little bit uh, less lighter, less lighter. Then yellow orange will be medium value in the light areas, light values. So that way the color variations, the tonal variation will come. So temporarily I am not working anything, just I am using the background for the time being to use it. Now this is the focal area the sky plot, or you call it a sky plot. Next time I'm going to the horizon.
see the point is I'm not interested to paint uh, like a photographical images photography photographic images or what you think uh, just it's like photographic images I don't like to paint you have to give a feeling of the trees, the skies, the moss and everything. In reality, you will see the things that way. So I would like to paint to give you a feeling of whole instead of feeling, giving a feeling of detail. I would like to give you the feeling of whole. So I work to capture that whole feeling this way without bothering about detail. But you will say the detail anyway because I will feel detail when you are on its own, when you see that mosses. I would like to put uh, a little bit reflection or some path or something or just uh, putting some down without bothering about reflection or path or thing. Something usually 
we put always some reflection to get it to get that uh, feeling easily to give us some striking effect but if you go for drum it is a little bit difficult it is a little bit too hard to put more effort to get it uh, appealing for the eye so i decided to go for instead of uh, simply putting some reflection or some light color i would like to go to ground which is a little bit difficult but it will give you some satisfaction some challenge yeah we need we need some challenge on this
see the point is this line, this highlight. You can balance this area on this area. So you have to keep this line till the end. If you remove this line, automatically you will lose that life in the painting. A small line. You call it what you call it accent lines, accents. Those accents sometimes it happens spontaneously, sometimes you have to do it consciously, but you have to keep them carefully once it happens. These are other accents. So those skylight, those colors, these things are this and this, these things will balance the whole picture. They are valuable actually. We call it. Uh, I, I told you already. It still happens. It happens sometimes, and you have to do it consciously.
cutting uh, trees is always to me they are not the trees to me simply they are verticals i work first diagonal shapes horizontal shapes because the nature structured with with the three shapes one is diagonal and the other one is horizontal third one is vertical so mountains and all those shapes will be diagonal the ground will be the earth will be the ground will be horizontal the trees are verticals so final i used to work trees in the last final stages because after working diagonals and the horizontals i work verticals look at the detail how i painted are you able to distinguish or separate the shapes with each other i think it's impossible they are intermixed with each other every shape connected with other shape every color connected with other color every value connected with other value even if you light so you see the light everywhere on every object on every area there is lot of detail lot of textures see those white and uh, those light yellow streaks how they balance with each other see those diagonal strokes those oranges the light yellows diagonal strokes how they create movement mainly when you see it uh, with uh, observation you feel the movement everywhere again i am telling you feel the movement every day you your eye won't stand anywhere except in that light area which is focal point only in that focal point your eye rest for some moments of that it will start to roam and it will move from there to look at total canvas to look at laserly to look at every color of the seeing the shapes so observe how the ground how the how i how many cuts are there how many breaks are there how many slopes are there how many ups and downs are there see that is in center of the painting the small white horizontal white color which represents some water but it's working as a connecting point to the top light top light in the sky light in the ground a small horizontal stroke in the center between the water and the foreground the light in the sky plays key role without that they won't be connected that's the that's the science that's the science of painting you must know about it see those trees nearest to the sunlight see that green how dull green it is which is affected by sunlight that yellow orange light see how the slopes are moving towards light how the those tree trunks branches moving towards the light all are just look at it all are moving towards the light so the viewers i also will see the painting that way every object every color everything every texture it is moving towards the light the viewers are i also moves like that it's the greatest secret of to capture movement in painting it's all these broad strokes 
broad color, operating colors, uniting them with each other, maintaining chroma. I try to achieve movement, unity, harmony, and balance. See how mysterious it is. You don't know, you are not able to see everything is there. You will have a lot of, you will have a lot to imagine. You need so much imagination to see. Automatically your brain will think, your brain, your brain, your brain will try to imagine what are there. What kind of bushes are there? What kind of rocks are there? What kind of textures are there? Those textures belong to what kind of shapes? These things you will think. See the foreground, the water in close-up, in detail. How the strokes are moving this way or that way, jig-jaggingly. But they are, they are having a discipline. They have a path to follow. There are, those colors are interacting with each other. The yellows, violets, blue violets. See, this is the painting, finally. This is the finished painting. You will see it. How much depth you will feel there. How much intensity is there, color intensity. How the light everywhere. 